80 or 90 percent of work happens before you even open the keynote or powerpoint or whatever uh, so there's a lot of a lot of preparation work Hey there, and welcome to yet another episode of the World of Presentations podcast brought to you by us at Presentation Agency 6 Labs, where we not only develop presentations and tra train people from some of the biggest brands out there, but we also organize and host the largest presentation skills event in the world called Present to Succeed. This podcast is for all of you who constantly try to push the limits of their presentations and strive to be exceptional every single time. I'm Boris, the founder of the company and your host for today's episode. And with me, I have someone truly special. So let me tell you a little bit about her. She is a presentation and data designer based in Barcelona, one of my favorite cities, actually. <laughs> she is also an author of two courses, at least right now, on presentation design for the now very, very popular online platform called Domestica. And if that's not enough for all of you who are listening or watching to this one, she is also one of the people we chased as a speaker for the first edition of our conference. And she actually agreed. Uh, everyone <laughs> listening and watching, welcome Katya Kovalenko. Katya, super happy to finally have you on our podcast. Thanks for taking the time. And now fill in the gaps. What did I miss? <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me. Um, well, you actually said a lot. I didn't know you 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 know you knew so much about me. I'm very prepared, um, you know. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. how did you end, how did you end up in the presentation space and in the presentation business? Let's start there. Well, yeah, okay. So be before I became presentation and data designer, which is kind of a new label for me. Um, I used to work in advertising and communication agencies. So I was a graphic designer and I did pretty much everything from web design to campaigns, social media, ads, branding, anything. And um, on my first job, when I started out as an intern, uh, I used to get a lot of, um, I got asked a lot to, to clean up presentations, like a typical uh, very ugly PowerPoints, internal, and um, I accepted them, of course, because no one else would, because I was, I was surrounded by a bunch of senior designers, which are very cool, and nobody they would do that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I was super motivated. It was my first job, so of course I would accept. And I have to say, I kind of liked it. And so I started doing that. And after a while, what I did was um, to help create um, proposals for, for clients. So that was a big step up for me at that first job because um, those were important presentations. Because yep. it was like creative proposals with a new campaign or something for a client. So those had to be very beautiful and clean and nice presentations. And that, I think... In that moment, I started to see the potential that presentations have as a, as a sales tool or as a, you know, as an impact. Um, so yeah, that, that, that was what I started with presentations. And I was doing that on every next job and every next agency that I worked in until I decided to quit my last job. That was... <laughs> <laughs> two years ago and uh, it was kind of um, faith I would say because I didn't know I didn't have a clear idea of what to do next I, I always knew that I wanted to work on my own but I haven't thought about presentations at that point yet uh, what I did was to upload a few projects to my Behance portfolio and I saw a lot of interest and I started to get these messages from, from startups, from US-based companies. And um, I started to get freelance gigs from that. So as I was designing new presentations, I kept uploading new projects to the, uh, to the portfolio. And I think that's when I became a presentation designer. <laughs> okay. the, the <laughs> Which still, is... still sounds kind of weird, right? It's like when I, I say to, to... Everyone, like if you think about it and if you listen to like everyone in our industry you will see that everyone in this industry 
got to this industry and is in this industry for some like very strange reason you know like right <laughs> no one intentionally went or graduated college or a university and said now i'll be doing presentations you know <laughs> like that that's what i want to do <laughs> in my <laughs> that, life that never happens and from what i know in regards to the designers and the creative people in general for them it's even offensive you know to talk exactly about no i got asked the other day the other day yeah. uh, i talked to someone and um, they were like presentations that like what happened to you like what yeah. happened to you in your life and i was yeah. like i like it <laughs> that's <laughs> relax, crazy relax relax enjoy your day <laughs> it's like, a thing fine. Fine. <laughs> so let's yeah. talk about a little bit about what you are seeing in regards to and what are the things that let's say we can teach the audience here a lot of the people that are going to listen to this one are not people who are designers or presentation okay. designers or creative people meaning that not that they are not creative <laughs> let's put it this way <laughs> they're just not coming from the design world they don't have this design education or anything like this uh what what should one what should a person who doesn't have a design background know or learn to be able to create slides that are not like a presentation designer did them but still mm -hmm be for them to be effective like what should they learn or try to master as people say what do you think right right well that's it's interesting because um last year i got asked to create this first course on domestic about presentations and um i was surprised by that too it was the whole it, it was before the the pandemic and so we started to work on the content and we launched right after the pandemic started and that was like, wow, that's exactly the moment when people really need to know how to do presentations. Uh, that was another lucky coincidence in my life. But um, the thing that I'm seeing right now, and I'm really amazed by that, is the diversity of the students that I have there um, and their professions. I have, I don't know, uh, from university teachers and students, which is like uh, something logical, um, then there is um, there are scientists. Uh, I have two priests. Wow! Th this is real. Like I have two priests, not one, two. They are um, also, by the way, doing presentations. That's interesting. But yeah, everybody's doing military presentation, military. like military. That's interesting. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what those presentations are, but they do it, and like so many other professions in in the whole world. So that's really inspiring and um and i think it's a great moment right now to to learn how to do the presentations and um i think that from all the areas of design or graphic design presentations is the only one available to anyone because you don't need any fancy software any you know all, all the presentation software that exists is very intuitive and simple kind of kind of <laughs> kind of but it's easy to learn and there's a lot of tutorials about that. Yeah. And so I think the only, um, the only thing to learn is the basic principles of design. And I think with that basic knowledge, you can create really great presentations. And also, I always say that uh, 80 or 90% of work happens before you even open the keynote or PowerPoint or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so there's a lot of a lot of preparation work and um i think it's also very important to not rush into it because i know that lots of people create presentations like in the last moment um so yeah but if you pre prepare your your structure the content and everything and then you pay attention to the decisions design-wise decisions like typography color selection and uh, the general look and feel if you prepare that beforehand the presentation will look much better than just improvising there in the in a new document what would be the design because when we say design principles for sure people would say okay i'll google design principles <laughs> or i'll find a book that's called design principles and for sure there would be uh there will be a book or two or many <laughs> yeah <laughs> on the topic what are the like if you have to name a few of the most important design principles like let's just name them a little bit and just throw them out there so that people 
know what we are talking about. Like you said, fonts and typography, then you said colors, anything else there that's considered a design principle? I would say uh, composition principles. That's even even most even the most important thing, I, th I think. Um, I was like the, the third course, which is about to launch, it's about the design principles applied to presentation design. So uh, I talk a lot about typography, but with um, not not about fonts or the details of each font, but just the principles like always try to find contrast or uh, do not mix too many typographies in there. So they're very basic things. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I would say composition is the, is the most important thing. Yeah. Composition and layout. Like, yeah, I was about to say, are, aren't you in the design space calling this a layout? Because I think that every, is there a difference between composition and layout or not? Should I be? think composition is more like a theory of okay. layout, you know, okay. when it, like how you position the elements in relation to each other. Yeah. I think it's more like a, a general term. If I'm, I don't know if I'm right or not, but that's how I understand it. <laughs> okay, so um, because layout for me, like I hear that word in here inside of our office very, very often. And mm. for me, the layout is all about, hey, how do you like arrange things on that slide? Even though again, I'm not a designer, so hmm. I may be very, very wrong here. <laughs> no, you're not, you're not that wrong. <laughs> uh, so here, what you are saying is that just to confirm it to everybody, and hmm. it's obviously from the students in the domestic courses, these, you don't have to be, are you already seeing successful exercises, successful examples from your students? Because absolutely, it's very interesting to see that you don't have to be a designer to be able to do those slides, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Also, because I think in presentation design, uh, simplicity is the key. Yeah. That's why it's it's kind of easy to to create a, a very beautiful impactful presentation with uh with less right yeah. you don't need to decorate it in in any way it's just uh the simple the better and, and yeah. you said something by the way very interesting that all of the work happens before you actually open powerpoint or keynote i know that you're a keynote fan which yeah. is <laughs> you're, obviously a, you're obviously an apple fan also yeah but <laughs> You know, it's, a, it's insane. I mean, it is a great, great tool indeed. But PowerPoint is also not to be underestimated for sure. Of um, course not. Even, even though there are like tools at the end. But why would you say that? Like, why did you say that? Like, elaborate a little bit more on that. Like, why are you saying, hey, a lot of the work happens way before you actually open any tool like that? Let's not exclude, let's say, Google Slides or hmm. Prezi or any other. Yeah, the tool doesn't really matter. It's just that when you open the new document and you see the empty slide, there's a lot of fear to this empty slide, you know, that, that says, you know, the, the, the basic one. Yeah. Uh, and so what happens is that people, tr people start to improvise. And that's, that's what's tricky because if you don't really know what you're doing and you just start to make decisions as you go, and uh, it happens also with uh, with the images like you're you're creating a new slide and you need an image and so you go to i don't know google images or whatever and you pick the first one you see and you just drop it there and it just becomes a mess that's why uh what i always try to teach is that not only do you prepare the content and the structure beforehand but you also um pick the palette pick the fonts and uh I even I even built a grid system in the slide so you can arrange the the layout in the right way. So you just uh, the moment when you open a new document, uh, you already know exactly what to do, and that's yeah. for, for for me that's the key. Yeah. So there's no improvisation. Yeah, because when you are not a designer, improvisation is always. Even if you're a designer, I think. Oh, okay. I've yeah. Heard. All right. That's yeah, interesting. I don't know. So, yeah, I have, I have always been like a very strategic in in regards to to design. Like ahead. I think every every decision has to have a why, okay. and you have to be able to 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 justify every little detail in the design. Yeah, we always teach our customers and the people that we work with. Hey, like 
think about like what you said in regards to simplicity if you think about how do you achieve it that would be a very interesting question right like many people ask okay so how do you simplify that and i'm like hmm, let's think about and let's explore the whole slide or all of the slides that you have but let's go one by one the main hmm. idea is that at least for me and even before the agency and the company and everything else i was in the it space and the way that i learned to approach it that's very important i think for everyone who is not a designer and listening to this one the way I learned to approach it is by just questioning every single element, every single detail, every single thing that's on the slide with a very simple question that's, is that helping me communicate the message? Yes or no, right? Coming from the IT space, right. it's like zero or one, right? So that's why it's like yes or no. And if it's a yes, it should be there. But if it's a no, even if it hurts, because I think that you have seen this with your the people around you and the companies that you work with, etc., I don't know if you recently heard it at least, but everyone is like, I cannot remove this. Like, this is so important. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I cannot simplify it more. This is just, everything is important. I'm like, yeah. mm, not exactly, you know? So every single element you have to question and say, hey, is this helping me or is it like, is it helping me really? Yes, it's there. If it's not, just remove it because the slide itself has like, those limitations exactly you know, this physical space that you can fill in but once you fill it in then you have a problem right it becomes busy yeah sometimes. yeah and one thing is to simplify what's already there uh that's one thing yeah and the other thing i see a lot is that people who don't have um a lot of confidence in in design uh they tend to decorate slides with things okay, yeah. like put in everything there and so it looks beautiful like circles of colors and, and stuff like that yeah. and um i think there is a phrase i don't i have no idea who the author is uh but it says something like a uh, good design is not the one um how was it good design is not when there is nothing else to add but when there's nothing else to take out yeah or something like that something like that yeah right. I think yeah yeah, and if hmm. you and if you stop and just think about that, that will that will make you probably rethink a lot of presentations yeah. and many more things. Anyway, you mentioned fonts, you mentioned Google, you mentioned images and people taking them, etc. Let's talk about like tools and resources. Like, what can people use? What where should they go for great stuff that they can utilize for their presentations? What are your top places and tools and resources for that matter? Okay, so for the images, uh, that's another thing that I always advise to prepare beforehand. Uh, for example, I use a lot unsplash.com. Yeah. And uh, you know that when you're registered there, you can create your own collections of images. Yeah. And that's, yeah. <laughs> and that's really great because you can, um, you can save the images into a collection and you can actually check if the style matches, even the colors. That's nice. And so you see the whole thing, and uh, then once applied to the presentation, you can maintain the same style across the whole thing. And that's great. And even if it's not Unsplash, if it's um, other spaces, you can do the same by uh, just downloading the images beforehand into a folder on your computer and just check if the style is coherent and it seems um, same. Yeah, yeah. it's consistent. Hmm. Okay, so Unsplash exactly. follows. Unsplash. Uh, then I use, um, I, I have my favorite place uh, for icons, which is also a very important tool for presentations. Um, it's called Streamline. Do you know Streamline. it? Streamline. Okay. Streamline. It's a huge library of icons, and they have like thousands of icons. And uh, the whole library, they have it in three different ways. They have it in light, in regular, and in bold with um, filling, color. And you can change colors, you can change formats. It's very intuitive, very easy to use. And it allows you to, again, maintain the same style across the whole presentation. Is it, is it free or is it paid? Like, was it's it paid. It's okay. paid. Yeah. How so much does it cost per month, per year? I, you know? I think... Uh, I think you pay once, but I'm not sure. Per year. Yeah. Those not per year, just pay. just one time payment. Oh, you mean you pay once and then? I think so. 
Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Hmm. We'll check that out. Okay, icons and photos. You're keeping it very uh, simple, up to one resource each. Anything yeah. else that you have to add there? <laughs> Let's say fonts, anything on the typography end when people have the freedom to choose, right? When they have the freedom. Right, exactly. Yeah. Well, then just uh, the Google fonts, yeah. Adobe fonts. Yeah, the sim because I always try to use very simple typography. Sans serif, nothing super fancy, unless the style requires something very special and custom. Uh, but usually, just normal, normal tabs from Google Fonts. Yeah, Google Fonts. Yeah. By the way. Hmm. I recently we, we are currently rebranding. Actually, when this episode is going to be public, we probably would be re should be ready with a new brand. I don't know. Uh, but <laughs> anyway, uh, we were changing our fonts and we purchased another. Like we purchased a brand new font from a studio here in Sofia that actually is building fonts for companies like Adobe, Nike, all of those, all of those companies, but they are based here in Sofia. And the guys were explaining to us that when Google fonts actually arrived on the market, like when they published that amount of fonts <laughs> into their platform completely for free, they really do, did some damage to many of the agencies yeah. that are doing typography, like globally, like not just here or in, uh, let's say in Spain, but globally, the whole community was like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, what's <laughs> going on? There are so many fonts in Google Fonts. That is, yeah. oh my God. It's but they also made it so accessible to anyone. And it's important in presentations, you know, when you, if you, Re um, if you send it to someone or if you reuse it, you have to make sure that the font is accessible and you don't have to, you know, send all the fonts um, yeah. with yeah. the presentation. What, by so the way, what's your take on the on the biggest design uh, on the biggest design um, fight or whatever? You call, like <laughs> many designers um, argue about. Should you use a sans serif font or should you use a serif font? And for everyone who is not aware of what sans serif and serif is, maybe you can elaborate and then uh, give us a little bit of an opinion. What's your take on that battle that's happening in the last few years? Are there really the people who, who have a, a, a pre preferred font? Like, no, the only they are use just serif? Fighting whether or not they should be using serif fonts in their presentations. A lot, like a bigger and bigger group is saying, like, why not? And another group is like, mm, you shouldn't. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's 50 50 split. It's a very interesting thing. And I had no idea. Saying. I had no idea about this fight. But uh, I mean, of course, you can use anything as okay. long as it's, it's in accordance with, your, with the style of your company or your project or whatever. Um, of course, serif fonts are beautiful and they're, um, they were built to you know, to, to be readable in, in, in small, um, sizes, small sizes. sizes. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So why not? I probably, of course, right now, everybody's doing this, uh, sans serif logos, right? So it's very, uh, techy, very startupy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <All right. laughs> that's why in, in, I, I don't know, 80% or 90% of cases, I, I always, end up using sans serif fonts, uh, but I have absolutely nothing against serif fonts. They are beautiful. And you can even maybe mix them again, if you know exactly what you're doing. Yes, that's a very dangerous place there. <laughs> Any tools like resources, we have them on Splash Stream. Oh, by the way, I was writing mm. them down here on the other mm. monitor. There is, there is another one, very interesting one for colors, because I know many people struggle okay. as well with the combinations of colors if they yeah. have to come up with them from scratch. Uh, and so for that, I use Adobe Color. It's, um, it's a very complex tool you have you know you have the the color wheel which you can play around with and uh, you can also explore lots of um, different pre-made um, color harmonies um, and that that's amazing to to also to learn about color and because uh, color color is not something um, random right you should you should know exactly what you're doing with color as well because it can create a lot of impact. Um, so yeah, there's Adobe Color, Rotary. and then there's Color Color Hunt, 
All right. Uh, which is basically just uh, lots of uh, color palettes composed by four colors. And the combinations are very interesting. And I really like that because I, I'm not a fan of primary colors. I always like something more interesting. And uh, there's a lot of inspiration there. And you can just copy paste them to your um, presentation or whatever. Yeah, very easily, probably. Especially yeah. nowadays, even even PowerPoint announced hex color. Like, come on, like really? Like it <laughs> years, but it's now a reality. You know, like now you finally, can, right? <laughs> now finally, when this, this was announced, we were like just twenty years after. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to announce it even. Yeah, right? yeah, don't announce. Too late. It. Really? <laughs> Let's talk about data. Uh, you said data designer, like data is everywhere, like everywhere in startup pitches, in business presentations, in the corporate world. What do you see there? What should people do? How should they approach? Uh, I think that you have spent like at least one module in one of your courses talking about data and you showed um, like a real world case. Hey, here is how we approach this. Like what is the, what is the way that you advise people to approach data visualizations when they have charts, tables, like all that stuff? Yeah, it's 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 kind of tricky too, uh, because again, the goal is to communicate only what's important, right? And especially with graphs and charts, uh, there's this danger of overloading again with um, lots of elements. And so again, we're talking about simplicity. And um, for me as well, it's all about preparation work. So if you're working with large amounts of information, uh, what I do usually, and that's, for me, it's, it's, it's kind of a natural process uh, because I always, I always do that. When I read the book, it's like, okay, whatever, whatever, whatever. Okay, that's important. And, you know, it's just like a natural filter that I have. But I see that a lot of people struggle with that. And so I, I started to wonder why, if it's, why it's natural to me and not to others. And, um, and yeah, I think it, 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 it has to do with, um, the ability to focus and extract insights. Mm. So when you have this, like a huge report and you have to reduce it to one slide, for example, or to a short infographic, um, what do you do? Right. So for me first, it's, it's going to the, it's narrowing down everything to just one phrase. Like, what's mm -hmm. the most important thing? If I have to reduce it to one phrase, what would it be? And then once I found it, I'm just going to start completing it little by little, uh, only adding what's really important and not the other way around. So you're not taking decoration out, you, you go the other way around, right? So it's the most yeah. important thing first, and then you complete it, but like with only what's important. Yeah, I think that a lot of people are skipping that part and they don't ask that question like, what is the most important thing that hmm. I need to communicate here? And that's why we end up seeing just tables and tables or just a lot of data or a lot of a pie chart with like 20 slices or whatever it is. And they just say everything is important, but is it really? Like that is... Exactly. Yeah, that is exactly. so, such a big question to ask. Like, what is the most important thing? So having that one from there, you go and sketch it or you directly go into a tool? Like, how do you approach it from there? Uh, it depends on the visual. If it's if it's, uh, if it's it's a graph, for example, there is no, no need to sketch. Uh, you just, uh, again, what you said, if you're adding a chart to, to a slide, uh, there is no need to put like all the little numbers because it's distracting. You just uh, decide again what's important and then leave maybe just one number, which is what you want to communicate. And then the other thing would just complete the information. But yeah, it can get really overwhelming by having too many elements. And then if I'm working on something more uh, visual but not so related with numbers, then I do sketch. And it's just about getting ideas onto a paper. I even do it when I'm having a call, for example, or a video meeting. I'm just 
sketching things and and then some ideas would just come up on the paper. That's why I love paper so much because <laughs> I got critiqued the other day because I posted this uh, this photo of my notepad uh, that was empty and there was just a date and a meeting with meeting with someone and I posted it like I, I really should start taking notes and people were like, why are you not using Notion or something like that? There's a lot of tools and uh, and that's exactly why, because when you set your your hand free, you know, just drawing, there's a lot of things that just yeah, come just up happen. from your <laughs> exactly, exactly. And then you see it, and it's like, wow, okay. And then you start to explore every version and see what what can you develop it into. Yeah. By the way, what, mm. what you said about all of the elements that a chart can have, especially in PowerPoint and Keynote, none of them is like super great in like their default behavior they always add a lot of details that may not be always needed and helping that message you know being communicated so do you by the way just i'm curious do you think that people leave a lot of information on their not a lot of information a lot of data on their slides do you think that sometimes that is related to them being um not that confident with what the people on the other end will think about them because for example, I have heard at least a few times, like, I don't know how many, but anyway, like at least a dozen times already that if they go with that simple chart or if they just push a number, like huge number on the slide, people on the other side who are their, like, their audience will think, or at least that's what they are saying, will think that they haven't done enough, you know, <laughs> like, like that they... Right. Yeah, you know, like it's way too simple and they cheated and they haven't spent enough time or work on this. And mm -hmm. you see, it's just one number. You see, it's like, yeah. what, what, do you see something like this? What's your take? I see it all the time. But I think the interesting thing is that the people like your audience or the people on the other side never think that. It's, it's <laughs> your fear. It's your fear of underdoing. And that's why you do that. You know, and it's important to that you have it clear that the simplicity is what transmits the message way better. Mm. And so that's the thing that you have to, you know, have it in your own mind because the people on the other hand would never think that. Never. So in fact, they would appreciate having such a simple right. visual and not having to figure out like what's in this chart? What is it? What, where should I look? Right. Yeah. So, and I believe, especially nowadays in this virtual or virtual communication thing, like that is so tricky nowadays with all of the slides that need to be built that if you think about it, they need to fit sometimes and be designed with a mobile phone in mind. Like mm -hmm. there, are, there are a lot of people, by the way, that like very, very openly say that they consume their team meetings or team presentations or whatever while on the go with their dog outside. You know right so it's impossible to see all the little details all the little detail, details mm. and this pushes like if presentations were hard before like think about now like not only the delivery right. is very different but the design needs to be so simple that it needs to work on a mobile phone <laughs> like, no totally totally and there is this whole world uh, of data scientists which or data um data visualization designers that do like very complex, um, you know, schemes and, and, and things like that. And that's one thing, which is amazing. But then we're talking about presentations. So it's, it's a completely other thing. And we have to do very, very, very simple visuals. So yeah. if you're talking about a complex topic, you can always, um, I don't know, send them separately. You know, the whole chart with, that you have or the huge table, you can just send it by email, but don't put it on, on the slide because that's super distracting and, and overwhelming. I always so the thing is to extract the message first. Yeah. Do you think that what they're most of the times, not every single time and not every single person, of course, what they're doing is more or less a little bit in the art space, you know, not exactly in the commercial design space. Because the data visualizations that I have seen, those crazy, crazy, incredibly looking visualizations of otherwise extremely complex data, when you look at it, I need to spend 
quality time to understand what they mean, you know? Exactly. But Which that's I... not exactly the case with presentations. Like I need to be exactly super fast to understand the chart or the graph which is again just an it exists as an approach but it just maybe a I don't know, exactly just it's just important to separate those things there is complex data visualization which is great and there is presentation and data visualization applied to presentation that mm. should be much more digestible and light yeah hmm. your session at the event what should people <laughs> expect at this session Hopefully you're prepared well, for that question, let's say. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what was that about? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm going to be talking, I'm going to be sharing one of my favorite parts of the process when designing a presentation, which is the art direction, the initial art direction. Because um, I work a lot with the startups that are on the very early stage, so they don't have a solid brand identity yeah. uh, or guidelines. So we kind of have to come up with, with something from scratch. And if there is something that I learned uh, during this year's working as a designer is that clients don't like surprises, visually like talking. Surprises. No. Okay, okay. <laughs> even, even working in advertising, I, I learned that because uh, of course you can surprise them by over delivering in quality or faster turnaround time, but they don't like um, something unexpected uh, visually talking. Okay. So I learned that it's important to uh, get this first step right before you throw in lots of hours into the design. And so what I do usually is to set up a discovery call with the, hopefully the finder, founder or, or the decision maker and uh, try to get as much information as I can about the company and also their references and expectations in terms of style. Uh, sometimes I ask for visual references like images or something that they like and sometimes it's just I take it out of the conversation and then based on that I do a very quick and easy exercise which is a mood board and I put together different examples of fonts, colors, um, images, and I develop a few different art directions to present to them. So they already know to expect what to expect. And um, I also do that because visual language is not easy for everyone. And the same word like minimalistic or bright can have different meaning to, to, to different people. Yeah. And so it's, it's important to say like, do you mean this or do you mean that? Mm. And uh, so I'm going to be sharing this this process of creating a mood board and then how to use this mood board to extract all the decisions that you need for, for the design. Got it. And this hmm. can, hearing you saying that, this can very easily be applied in the starting moment of an important presentation by somebody, right? Instead of jumping into PowerPoint or Keynote, this sounds like something that if the presentation is important, I always say that do not spend that amount of time on something that's just a, this regular sync with your team. But that sounds like a process or a thing that you can go through when you are brainstorming something important, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's that's when you like it's it's um it's a very easy exercise. So you can see everything, like all the elements together and check if they make sense together. Like if this color matches the typography or whether it communicates what you're trying to say or your values or not. And that's why it's super important. And um, it saves a lot of time because once they saw the mood board, the client saw the mood board, uh, there are not gonna be a lot, of, um, a lot of changes, a lot of feedback because they already know what to expect. And so when they receive the first version, it's like, okay, yeah. Makes sense. That's the direction. That's the, yeah. that's the way to go. Yeah. And I mm. think that everyone who is going to be doing their presentations on their own, like when they see it beforehand, they will say, okay, this is going somewhere. Right. Makes or, sense. Wait right. a minute. Hmm. hmm. Wait a minute. What's going on? Like something is wrong here. And that yeah. is way before you open PowerPoint. Exactly. You know, build a hundred slides and then you are like, Wait. I think this color doesn't work. Let's change yeah, the whole thing. Let's build the whole thing from scratch. <laughs> Got it. 
I can guess yeah. that no one needs previous experience about like no design experience, no No, absolutely not. Right? Go ahead. No. Perfect. No. That will be very interesting to look at. Hmm. Okay, one question before the last one. <laughs> <laughs> we discussed this one. Let's see whether or not you changed your opinion. Who else should we get on the podcast? Someone that okay, no. on you. Did you change your opinion? Yes, <laughs> I did. So. <laughs> yes, I did. Did you change it? For one I week? did. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Let's see who, <laughs> who you came up with. I just remember this guy that I, I follow for like a lot of time. Okay. Um, his name is Jack Butcher from Visualize Value. Okay. He does this amazing visualizations and uh, it's again about simplicity and so it's really really inspiring you should check him out he's, he, he publishes a lot on on twitter on and and uh on instagram and yeah okay we'll that's the guy sure that that's you, your guy <laughs> we'll chase jeff jeff you're hearing this one we're chasing you already you know? <laughs> Stay tuned on your Instagram and we'll tag him also on LinkedIn potentially when we publish the episodes and just say, hey, we did a shout out for you. You probably are someone great and we need to talk with you. Yeah, the first, uh, by the way, for everyone who, that no one can know your first answer, but your first answer was also, I think, uh, extremely applicable. <laughs> it was totally. Me to get myself on this podcast, which was like, hmm. You know, that would be very interesting thing. It's, I just uh, didn't want it to put you under pressure. So I came yeah, up with the second thank option. You one. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for that one. Now, one last, where can people find more about you, your work, and what is the best platform for them to connect? Is it LinkedIn or is it Instagram? It is, is it something Insta else? No, it is Instagram, I think. All right. Yeah. I wrote down LinkedIn, but okay. Yeah, I don't okay. publish a lot on LinkedIn. Okay. So Instagram mm. in regards to connecting with you, anything, any other place where they can check what you're doing? Um, well, there's Behance and Dribble, obviously. Okay. Um, <laughs> and then I'm also on Twitter and LinkedIn, but I, as I said, I, I, I don't, um, I'm not very active on those okay. two. So yeah, I would say Instagram, uh, Behance or Dribble. Okay. So should we link also the courses that you built, you created for Domestica? I think oh, absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. You know, I'm trying absolutely. to push your work here and you're not helping me. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. By the way, for everyone, we're going to make sure that we link all of those. Dribble is, by the way, a platform, insane platform. And it's with, when, when the, the moment I heard about that platform like years ago, I was like, there should be a mistake. Three, three beats, <laughs> like dribble, dribble, like three beats are like, that's, it's wrong. You got it wrong. And then they showed it to me. I was like, that's a very interesting decision. You know, like triple, three Bs. You know I still get know? it wrong all the time. I, I always write it with two. Where is this coming from? Like three Bs. Was I have no idea. Those guys? Like what happened? There? <laughs> that's something. Exactly. That has something to do with the, with the URL. Should be. <laughs> should be. Okay, Katya. Perfect. We are going. I'm going to make sure that all of the links, the unsplash, the streamline. I'm looking in my notes. Google Fonts, Adobe Color, Color Hunt. Mm -hmm. All of the five resources are going to be in the show notes. The courses that you have built, Behance, Dribble, and Instagram, not LinkedIn, and Instagram, mm -hmm. will be in the show notes of this blog post. Thank you so much for taking the time. We finally did it. You saw. See what <laughs> yes. Happens? After the last time when you had 330 megabytes and you were shocked, that <laughs> I know that you have 330 megabytes on your computer, which was, by the way, if I was on your position, I was going to be scary too, you know, like when you asked, like, I was very scared. That? I didn't believe that. And <laughs> you, I mean, you encouraged me to, to, to do a very, very nice um, cleanup, cleanup <laughs> on, my, on my computer. Yeah, I, by I the way, for everyone that. listening, we are using a platform that's called Zencaster. And Zencaster, when you join as a guest to a podcast, it actually scans your computer and it flags warnings that can potentially ruin the recording, you know? And one of the warnings is obviously about, hey, do you have space on your computer? Because we are recording some files in there. And Katya had 300 megs on her computer. And I was like, what's going on? And she was like, wait, how do you know this? <laughs> All of that stuff. I left her for 30 minutes to clean this up and she came back with 200. So that's how it, <laughs> that's how it worked. And then we rescheduled for seven days. That's how it goes. 
What an experience. <laughs> yeah, what an experience this was for um, you, I think. How did you clean up that <laughs> amount of space? Like, what happened? Well, I had um, like an accidental, very heavy PCDs, which I just deleted. What is this? PCDs? What is this? Uh, ah, PSDs, uh, photo the PSD. Yeah, Photoshop files. Yeah, oh, okay. I don't know how that happened, but it happened. Like, they so, should yeah. be. If you are now having a hundred... Like 12 clicks, gigabytes files. Okay. Yeah. That's impressive. Uh, yeah. right. Okay. Again, everyone, hope you enjoyed this recording. Kadet, thanks for joining. It was a huge Thank you pleasure. very much. Thank we you very much for having again me. Again, at some point in the future, probably when you announce the third course, we can bring you back to talk a little bit more about design principles and more on that topic, but an episode only on that topic. I will make sure that we link absolutely everything. If anyone has a question in regards to slide design, please let us know. And I'll make sure that we tag Katya in your comment so that everyone will help you out. Okay, Katya, are you in for that idea? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> what? Sorry? Even if it's on LinkedIn. Even if it's on LinkedIn. I'm up okay, to it. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> perfect. In the meantime, check our website, 356labs.com and the presentation skills conference that we are organizing, which became the largest presentation skills event of the year and in the world, by the way. By the, Katya, you don't know that, by the way. And let's I didn't know that. that one. But we are very close to closing 2,000 people to join this conference. That's amazing. That's crazy, right? I mean, that is insane by itself. <laughs> by <laughs> itself. I didn't believe that that's going to happen, but we are very close to making it happen. We are one, uh, we are 1,800, I think, right now, and we have one month. So we're recording this one month before the event, so wish us all the wow. best. And I think we'll that's make it happen. That's amazing. Yeah. I'm so, very honored to, to take a part of this. Yeah. Join us at the event. Katya will be there. A lot of other great people will be there. The prices of the tickets are super low in first place. So again, thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you like it and share it with a friend um, if you think that they need to learn more about presentations. Again, thanks everyone and see you in the next one.